This is Milo Djukanovic. He and his party ruled this country for more than 30 years. He and his circle of friends controlled politics, the economy, and many people say the local mafia in Montenegro as well. Then something happened that no one expected. Milo Djukanovic lost the presidential election. His successor will be Yakov Milatovic, 36 year old, Oxford educated, but there are a lot of conflicting information about this guy. So let's go and meet him. Mr. President-elect, congratulations on your victory. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, you spent many years abroad and what made you come back to pursue politics in Montenegro? Yeah, so I, I studied uh, in a number of countries, including in the States, in Italy, in Austria. Uh, I did my master's at the University of Oxford uh, for two years. Uh, I did an MPhil there in economics. Afterwards, I, I spent a number of years working, including in Germany, uh, in Frankfurt, the Deutsche Bank, but uh, for a number of years also in London for the European Bank for Extraction and Development. And then uh, there was COVID. We were all sent uh, to work from home. So this is how I basically came back and. Uh, uh, you know, I was based uh, for that time in Montenegro with my family and then uh, the regime changed uh, in 2020. Uh, the new government uh, was put in place uh, and uh, in that process uh, the new prime minister designate back then, he invited me to, uh, to, uh, for, a, for a discussion with him as a young professional. This was uh, Prime Minister Kirukapic? Yeah, it was Prime Minister Kirukapic back in 2020. And, uh, at one point, he offered me uh, to be his economic advisor. We'll talk about this later, but let me first um, quote a little bit how the Western so press is, 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 is looking on, on you and on Milo Djukanovic. They basically, uh, the Western press often depicted this election as a sort of runoff between a pro-Western candidate, meaning Mr. Djukanovic, and a pro-Serbian, a uh, pro-Russian candidate basically talking about you. <laughs> Is this uh, picture accurate? I mean, the, the accurate uh, picture was the following. Uh, uh, a Montenegrin patriot, a European progressive uh, politician such as myself, a person with uh, academic uh, background as well as international professional background uh, against uh, a quasi-dictator, basically, uh, a symbol of organized crime and corruption who was Djukanovic. A symbol of economic decline uh, uh, of the country, a ruined uh, economy, uh, ruined uh, a number of ruined uh, companies, hotels, etc., etc. So that was basically the the, the game, and uh, and I'm very lucky. I'm not lucky, but happy that the game was won by by a good guy, <laughs> which is myself in this case. So Djukanovic has lost the election, as you said. What is going to change? I think that uh, this is really sort of a, a, a big step forward towards sort of a, uh, a normal system of values. I think that uh, Djukanovic was a symbol of uh, inadequate system of values. It was sort of uh, the time in which uh, it was sort of a normal to to steal, to you know, to uh, to buy a false diploma, university diploma, to progress in that way, sort of uh, through the government hierarchy. Uh, it was the time in which also the independent journalists uh, were killed or prosecuted. The church was, uh, was prosecuted at the end. Uh, so what I'm representing is really sort of a, a normal system of values in which uh, education, hard work are the only things uh, that matter for success in life. You campaigned, you just mentioned the, the values, you campaigned to root out corruption. How? Naturally, uh, you know, fight against corruption and organized crime is uh, mostly in the hands of the prosecution and the courts, as well as the police, right? So, uh, but... Uh, Those guys are now a little bit more careful. The what? <laughs> Those guys in the police and the courts, they are now a little bit more careful because exactly. Milo is gone. Because Milo is gone, the old system is gone, and I think that now is really sort of uh, up to everybody to do the job uh, much, you know, in a much more better way. Uh, I think that uh, the first democratic government, uh, which I was you know, a member of, uh, which was created back in 2020, as well as the one afterwards, uh, sort of really you know, made uh, good progress when it comes to the fight against the organized crime and corruption. Uh, but uh, 
I think that the public perception is still uh, that uh, the fight is still inadequate, that uh, you know should be stronger. And I truly believe that uh, now with all the reforms that are sort of ongoing when it comes to the prosecution as well as the courts, as well as the police, uh, with the support from the European Commission and the international partners, uh, I think that uh, you know the things will sort of uh, progress uh, more quickly than uh, it was the case before. Because let me give you an example. Uh, so far over the last one or two years, uh, the prosecution already processed uh, sort of uh, the previous number one person of the court system, so the head of the Supreme Court, she is now being processed. Uh, also the head of the commercial court, a number of people from the police department. So that's just an example of how the institutions were captured by the organized crime. So people who were supposed to fight against the organized crime were basically the basis within the institutions of the organized crime. So that's that's something that uh, should never happen ever, ever again in Montenegro. What about Mr. Zhukanovic? Well, I mean, my job was to politically defeat him. And uh, as I said, now it's up to the prosecution uh, to see whether uh, there is uh, you know, anything that, uh, that uh, Zhukanovic should be processed for. I'm absolutely sure that there is, but I'm, you know, I'm leaving it to the prosecution. Yeah. Do you expect him to stay in Montenegro or maybe leave? Well, I think that uh, what, what is important for Montenegro is that uh, the justice is fully supported. So, uh, again, you know, this is the job for the prosecution and the courts, as well as the police. And, uh, you know, knowing, what, that knowing that he was a symbol of organized crime and corruption over the last 30 and something years, I believe that, uh, that processing him uh, is something that, uh, that uh, you know, can be an option if, uh, if, if there are, you know, enough evidences for, you know, for, for what he has been doing uh, to the country and to the society over the last uh, 30 years. Um, you just a couple of days ago said that you want closer ties with Serbia, talking about corruption, talking about authoritarian uh, ruler. Well, Mr. Vucic, um, when you look at him, there is no freedom of the press in Serbia, there is corruption in Serbia, um, there is no independent jurisdiction in Serbia. Um, you want, at the same time, you want you just said you, you, would like, you would like to fight corruption and you want closer ties with Mr. Vucic. Well, I mean, you know, I didn't really mention uh, Mr. Vucic per se, because, you know, Mr. Vucic is uh, a legitimately elected president of the Republic of Serbia. And uh, I respect that, naturally. He is representing Serbia. Uh, what I said is uh, that I would like, you know, to have closer relationship with Serbia mm. as a country. and. Uh, and obviously that Mr. Vucic represents that country. As an economist, I am really supporting uh, all the regional economic integrations and, you know, as you can imagine, Serbia is the biggest economy in the Western Balkans and the biggest country, uh, with the one with, with whom Montenegro has the closest ties. And it's very natural that, uh, that uh, as a president of the country, in the same way as Germany wants the, the you know, closest possible ties with France, or Greece with uh, Cyprus, or Austria with Germany, or Poland with Germany, it doesn't really matter. You know, that's, uh, that's something that, uh, that we also here in the Western Balkans uh, need to carefully uh, cherish. Uh, I would like to show you a video, uh, maybe you remember. Uh, it's the night of the victory on Sunday evening, and uh, we are basically sort of uh, proclaiming the electoral victory. And, uh, and we are celebrating with, uh, with, some, with some champagne. <laughs> How did you feel? You know, I felt, I felt victorious, but uh, at the same time, I think uh, it's a big responsibility as well. On that video, you can also see politicians that are close to Russia. I don't really know about their ties with Russia. Mm. I think that uh, that's, that's that's not really sort of uh, the case, if I understand correctly. Uh, it is sort of uh, true that uh, Democratic Front is a party which is, uh, and particularly in the past, which have been fighting for the interest of the, uh, mostly of the Serbian people in Montenegro. To put it in a nutshell, we don't have to worry in Europe. 
Absolutely not. You want Montenegro to become a member of the European Union. How are you going to achieve this? I think goal? that uh, so far our European integration path was only sort of a, a pro forma. Uh, uh, without uh, essence and uh, and really sort of a needed reforms, uh, Europe, Europe now. now. Yeah, Europe that's, now. That's, Just uh, to, to that's, translate it. <laughs> that's the that's the name of the movement. Why do we want to become the member of the EU? Because hopefully we share the same values as those that are currently present in the EU. I think that uh, with myself as a president, uh, this message will be trans will, will be transmitted to Brussels. Uh, sort of uh, more obviously and more adequately. You worked, uh, as you mentioned before, for uh, Deutsche Bank. Tell me a little bit more about um, <laughs> your perspective on Germany. I mean, Germany, I lived in, uh, in Germany for a bit less than a year in Frankfurt. I believe that, uh, that uh, Germany uh, will support the EU integration of Montenegro. And I'm really looking forward sort of, to enhance also the economic links with Germany. Let's very briefly talk about um, Russia. Um, member states, as you know, <coughs> of NATO have imposed sanctions against Russia for Moscow's aggression um, against Ukraine. It's an aggression. Do yeah. you agree on that? Yeah. I mean, what else you can say, you know, for, for the attack of one country on another country which is a sovereign member of the United Nations. Uh, Montenegro is, uh, uh, is on its EU part and this is why we are sort of aligning our foreign policy with the one of the EU 100%. I truly hope that the war in Ukraine will end soon. Firstly, because of Ukraine. Secondly, because all, all the negative consequences for Europe uh, uh, which are coming uh, because of the war, you know, including the security concerns, the, the economy, you know, look at uh, the prices uh, across Europe, look at the, look at the food prices, etc., uh, etc. Et look at the tourism sector, you know, Montenegro is, uh, Montenegrin economy is dependent on tourism. Uh, and uh, we are missing uh, sort of, uh, we, we as a tourist destination, we like normality. Mm. And, uh, and this is why Obviously, as, as everybody else in Montenegro, we are hoping for the end of the war as soon as possible. Your presidency is essentially a ceremonial post. To be really successful, you need a good prime minister. And as we know, there will be, uh, there will be a parliamentary vote in June. Well, I mean, you know, first of all, I expect uh, them to sort of, you know, to be as democratic as possible. Within the context, I think that uh, the biggest uh, step was made on Sunday when we defeated Djukanovic. He also stepped down uh, from the post uh, of the leader of his own party. So I expect that the new uh, assembly of the parliament will, will look uh, naturally much more realistic uh, to the sort of uh, to the to the reality of, of the country's politics. Uh, that the former ruling party will be most likely halved. That Europe now will you know enter the parliament uh, uh, you know sizably. Uh, as a president of the country, uh, I will sort of uh, try to uh, promote democratic processes uh, of the country and, uh, you know, hopefully after the parliamentary elections we get the government uh, which is politically stable uh, and uh, reform-oriented, uh, capable. Good luck with that. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.